In recent months around the world, the streets have become a theatre, if not a theatre of war per se, and something that looks very similar. The public en masse are tearing up their public spaces and turning on those who in name are entrusted to protect their safety and property. What is this, if not a desperate act to be heard, to have an effect, to make a change? An act performed by people who are powerless to make a difference in any other way and fall back on the only recourse left, to join together to occupy public places and express their concerns. In what form that expression eventually takes shape has many factors. There is the moment, the electric atmosphere of people gathered together by a shared desire to make the world a better place or to stop it getting worse. There is the place where they converge and what it symbolizes in their collective consciousness. And then there is the individual journeys that have propelled each one to be there, together, making a stand on the same road. This short film is about those factors. The moments, places, journeys, as experienced by a group of artists and activists who brought their attention to the relationship of the public to public spaces. And the way that this relationship, by taking the creative stance of a performance, can bring communities together, get voices heard, and maybe even change things a little. Firstly, what, what do we mean by a performer? Because to me, that's it, it, the very idea of a demonstration is a, is a theatrical, you know, it's a performance. Everybody gets them, they, they wear, they, they get their costumes on, they get their, you know, you know whether it's their party t shirt, their chain or a t shirt, and their, their kafirs, or it's their face paint, or their samba drum, or whatever. But it is a, do you not think it's a, it, there is something that, theatrical about it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's like to be effective for me, uh, you have to think about what public yeah. are ready to, to listen. Not what they, they not only what you want to, to say, but what people are uh, ready to listen. Like uh, if, you, if you say it more ironically, like the collateral damage is that children die. It's different than you say the we kill people in other countries, we kill children in other countries, and um, I have a problem with the groups that uh, people are really know what they want to say, but um, but they don't think about the public, so they don't think about the message, message it will reach, and if it will reach the people with that message, or if it's better if you change the message, and of course you stay with your point, but change a little bit in a way that people will listen more than... Um, so, can we perform a, a performance in a way that doesn't make the public, the, the, yeah, well, doesn't make the non-activist yeah. go and alienate it? But in the same way, how do we help people, who, how do we get the people who are active 
the activists who are really kind of, no, I want to say this. How do we get them persuade them to kind of bend each other back out there? Yeah. Maybe just be kind of not so much. But I think it's a very good question. We are um, the performance that don't that have to be by an art way yeah. or a so performative way yeah. like theater. Could be if you are studying science and if uh, you are studying the genetics, it could be you can do a performance as a public service with that kind of type of that kind of um, issue. Uh, you don't need to be an artist, a crazy artist, to do that. So it's like um, uh, the performance before the performance. You must tell the people that you, you have to. You are totally right when you say that uh, people must. Do what they want on the streets. Together, they, they must be free. They, so they must feel free. Yeah, it's but a moment where they are um, talking with there is an idea, wrong idea, the, that the, the art and, uh, is everything on the performance, or the performance must be artistic, or something like that. It could not be. If I am a lawyer, I can do a performance as a public uh, service too. Uh, uh, I could uh, walk on the streets and say, "What is your problem?" Oh, my husband, uh, ta -da -da. so you will do that, ta -ta -ta. and you are doing public service and you are doing a performance because you, you are not working, uh, but uh, you are not receiving money for that, but you are doing a real, uh, it's like a, water, uh, a wonderland, but uh, it, it is a performance and it would be nice if we think uh, that all kind of jobs, all kind of people, can so do really a performance I said, yes, in, and, um, and I said them, in things oh, that they, we they know, in the, the things that they not are, like something that they like, are, well, um, I at their we start will, working and then we see, so it's like, oh, you have a missing link, you know what I mean, there's a link, sometimes you need to find that link, that link. I mean, what about, it has to be something strategy with the government. There has to be someone who's working for housing, social housing, or yes. Yeah. People are starting to take notice, and especially councillors, because the local government they can implement change and policy. So by pushing, it is starting to change, um, definitely. But I think you need help. I think you need support to accomplish what you're trying to do. If you do it by yourself, then you're going to find it quite difficult. Now, of course. Yeah, you need to find, there must be an organisation somewhere in Portugal that does give advice to various people. Or there must be someone in your local government, it has to be. I think art is you know, really important, you know? especially for people with uh, mental disorders because it's like you know mm -hmm. sometimes it's like the only way they can really sort of express themselves mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a really fantastic form of expression mm -hmm. uh. yeah something, uh, something i was thinking about with that is um why don't we all feel regardless of what we do why don't we all feel like artists yeah it, you know so it's in, in this, you know, it goes back to me yeah, I, I feel like um, I'm, I'm very much a scientist, and I, like, how do I relate to this kind of like, uh, well, to art? How do I relate to it? Like, you know, it's um, it's very difficult. Like, how do I get involved? Like, like with the act, you know, it's a very uh, useful like forum for debate and sharing ideas and stuff. But how does somebody that like feels separate from the arts like actually get involved? Like, like I, I, yeah. I, and separate from activism as well. Um, and yeah, it's a very difficult question because I think as well when we deal with artists or activists in any situation, we have such stereotypes about them. You know, the artist with the stripes and the carafe mm -hmm. and the beret, and the activist who is dressed like a you know green all over mm -hmm. and has the mud in their hair, and that's an activist. Mm -hmm. So we have really strong ideas of stereotypes mm -hmm. that exist, and how do we yeah. break those down to people? Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. If the, our oppressors wanted to invent something that would stop a revolution, there'd be two fantastic inventions, computer games and drugs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think part of the, the revolution if there's, has to be to, to sharpen, to not, you know, to not lose our edge. And I think drugs makes you lose your edge. 
and makes his mind play with this. Everything is a balance, and what we're talking about is the balance between partying, protesting, and performing. When you know, we need to know when it is cool to be protesting. You know, when it is good to be partying, and and to find the balance between it all. And the same with this with youth culture that you know, we're talking about. Drugs is a balance. You can't do it all the time. You're not okay, you know. but you can't do it all the time because obviously you're not going to do anything. You're going to be thinking about all these stuff and all these amazing ideas that you've got, mm -hmm. but it's never going to happen mm -hmm. unless you actually stop it and and for a time and, and actually do it. Um, I think that we <coughs> in our times are used to getting results quite fast. Like we are not very patient. Like I think it's it's it's. At development as well like we are a consumer society so we want things fast and thinking that in the 1920s like we get a result out of what people did in the 1920s but if we're doing something today we actually want to result tomorrow like that would be and I, I know myself like I'm so impatient with the changes going on because I really I want to see the result as soon as possible so this is probably something where actually our action like the risk well, from the action to the result, it sometimes just takes a while and we have to keep um, confident in what we are doing. We need to highlight the things in the community that are happening that is positive to give people feedback of, yes, you are the difference and yes, it, it's, you're not alone, you're not having to fix the entire world, it's one bit at a time and that change can have far-reaching impact. For me, it's a bit like ripples in a pond, you know? You might throw a stone, but then there's going to be ripples. And for the person that's doing it, they might not see it. But, you know, they might not see that the, they are the stone that's thrown into the water with all the ripples that come away and come off that. They have far-reaching output forever. Hey. What's that? What's that? Sounds nice, but they just don't go and see it, you know. Uh, it's very nice, but uh, I have no time. And if they go past the street and uh, someone is acting, people look. You know, if you are doing something, people just stare and watch what you are doing. And maybe we can reach more people that way, so they can um, reach more people and they can see. Otherwise, if it was in the future. Uh, many people wouldn't go and wouldn't know about that. This way people just pass by and stare and if they are interested they, they stay there. Because it's, it's very difficult to reach everyone uh, and to, to make some publicity about this show in a theatre to everyone. This way people who you don't know or you don't have any connection, you can see that show and can be, fi and can be interested in it and can uh, stop and watch and can make the difference. Well, that's, that's why I that. Berlusconi and the corruption! Portugal and Liga and Malta! This is my entusiasm and Tonka! Fate to bed! Serbia to Kosovo! Can I have a lost egg on Laura? They don't want to change the world. <laughs> Not impossible. Because at the end, we won't do anything with that, okay? You can do a painting and so what? You can try to do a... <laughs> maybe it doesn't fit to the, <laughs> to the main objective of the, of the project, <laughs> okay? So... But, well, I guess... Uh, that's why I was saying it's quite pretentious and pompous to say, mm -hmm. okay, we as artists gonna, you know, give the... You can make the soundtrack of a revolution. You can make a kind of 
nice image, image you will find in the in the history books then. But that's the only thing we can do. Okay. I'm not going to change it. If you want to change something, you have to I don't know to do it for real, you know, maybe in a demo democratic way or maybe by by violence, by revolution for real. Mm -hmm. So we give too much attention to um, to art. Right? Mm. You think this? Yeah, for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I've got Because, uh, uh, Che Guevara, <laughs> <laughs> El Mechero de Che Guevara, hasta la victoria siempre, muy barato, <laughs> que nos viene de China. to 
deal with that kind of language, um, also to create our uh, dispositions towards culture, towards art, towards society, towards uh, dealing with each other. So, of course, it's important to, to make that difference and to make it um, public. Um, the, the fact that it's not in that uh, specific space, like culture, right? or, or like theatres, or like you said, or a stage, or, it's also, um, it, it has also, uh, I think, in my perspective, all the, the, the pertinence, because it's, um, it's important not to sacralize all the time the kind of spaces to do something. So, uh, of course, it's, uh, and it's also creative appropriation of what we have. Do you understand? But what I think it's the most uh, important, or what I think that touched me more, you know, as a participant, is that somehow the fact that we, during some days, build something with someone that we don't know, someone that doesn't speak our language, someone that doesn't like what we do and try to create something to present, I think it's, it marks you in, um, in a very profound way and it can change your disposition towards culture um, and identity, you know, like, you know, so it has a, a, a aim, a range, to, a more, um, more profound and wide than, um, than what it is. I, I will explain it in, in another way. You or can, can you make some example? example yes, yes, for instance, we are doing this uh, spectacle, this presentation for tonight or for tomorrow. Tonight or tomorrow it will be and it will lose that, that moment when it will stop, it will end and uh, the project was finished, you understand? So what do I, uh, personally, what do I uh, keep with me when that moment passes? And I keep that what I, what I told before. I keep um, by practicing, by dealing, by doing, by interacting, I keep another vision of the world. Or I start to have another vision of the world. And that is priceless. And that we cannot know when does it end. The spectacle ends tomorrow, it's a clock. But that can be with you all your life, or hopefully will be. And that's also other ways of learning, you know? It's, uh, so it's, it's, it makes all the difference to do this kind of thing with regular people, ordinary people in ordinary place, with ordinary materials. They have the same rights to play with that language, you know? And in a non-pretentious, of course, way. And of course, it's not an Oscar, it's not, uh, yeah. you understand?
we got to the beginning of an invalid street where everyone created really long wall and we stopped the traffic for so long and there were beat horns going and the more that the horns went the more we were the more energized we were getting to go no this is like this is why we're here everyone needs to know and taking our time not being pressured to move on so so many of us it felt amazing <laughs> Riecht, riecht sehr aufregend und sehr, 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 also sehr viel, viel, also sehr, so viel Trommler und viel Tänzer. Es war einfach, einfach schön. Für mich war es einfach uh, das erste Mal, dass ich bei sowas dabei war, großen Performance. Because before that I joined this group, I was thinking that the people which are handicapped, they can't do nothing. But now, as the experience that I get from them, they are really as normal as normal people. They do everything. If the, the part which are not working, but they, so the part which are working, do everything. Just why I can say that nothing which is impossible for them. Everything is possible. What they do, what I do, they can't do that. Alles sehr, der öffentliche Raum ist sehr geordnet ist, sehr aufgeteilt und äh, eigentlich nicht mehr so der Öffentlichkeit so gehört, wie wir denken, dass sie gehören könnte. Es ist alles sehr reglementiert, was man wo, wie machen darf und wir glauben, dass so kleine Kunstirritationen äh, ein bisschen Schwung ins Leben bringen können. Reaktionen. Es gibt auch sehr oft negative Reaktionen. Wenn, wenn Menschen mit Behinderungen tanzen, bekannte Tanzgruppe von mir hat in Tirol getanzt und die haben dann sehr narzisstische Rückmeldungen bekommen, also von einem Fußgänger. Also so, er hat gemeint, Hartheim gehört wieder eröffnet. <lacht> Hartheim ist ein... ein ein, ein, ein altes Schloss, in dem in den, vor 60 Jahren Menschen mit Behinderungen ermordet wurden von den Nazis. Also nur so zur Fußnote. Also es gibt die unterschiedlichsten Reaktionen und ich glaube, dass man auch auf der Straße vielleicht äh, erstens mehr improvisieren muss, weil wenn plötzlich Passanten durch dein geplantes Bild gehen, dann muss er damit irgendwie umgehen können. Also ich glaube, man muss das können. Und auch umgehen können mit Kritik vielleicht. Und auch versuchen, die Passanten einzubeziehen und ranzulocken, weil das ist auch das Ziel, dass man sie ein bisschen, dass sie ihre Sichtweise ändern über uns und auch über sich. Also ich glaube, dass die Straße wahrscheinlich ein hartes Pflaster ist. Aber wir sind ja viele und können uns auch gegenseitig unterstützen und anfeuern. Ich glaube schon, dass diese Aktionen auf der Straße und im öffentlichen Raum äh, nicht nur momentan eine Wirkung haben, weil irgendwo auch die Leute, die weitergehen, behalten ja irgendwo das Bild im Kopf, weil es ist ungewöhnlich. Ja. Es ist ungewöhnlich, dass jemand auf der Straße wie sie am Boden liegt und so tut, als ob er schläft oder was so gut. <lacht> und es äh, ist ungewöhnlich, dass jemand mit einem Rollstuhl tanzt. Es ist schon überhaupt ungewöhnlich, auf der Straße noch ungewöhnlicher. 
Ja, ganz komisch bin ich zum Tanz gekommen. Ich habe ich hab immer gedacht, Tanz, das ist was für andere Leute und war eigentlich immer eher, äh, habe mich immer ausgeschlossen gefühlt, wenn andere Leute getanzt haben, bin ich halt herumgesessen und gewartet, bis wir fertig sind. Und dann eines Tages ist, bin ich am Rathausplatz in Wien gesessen, wo mir diese Opernfilme gezeigt werden. Und dann ist ein Mann zu mir gekommen und hat gesagt, uh, would you like to dance with me? Und ich war ziemlich unangenehm berührt und, und verletzt, weil ich gedacht habe, also das, jetzt sitze ich da im Rollstuhl und da kommt er daher und fragt mich so, ob ich mit ihm tanze. Ich habe mich eher peinlich berührt gefühlt und habe ihn weggeschickt und dann haben wir doch ein bisschen Erkundigungen über ihn eingezogen und ein Jahr später war ich dann in dieser beim Impulstanz Festival in einem Workshop und habe mir die Arbeit einmal angesehen und war sehr war ein Schlüsselerlebnis für mich, ja. Ich habe hab auch früher nie mit Leuten mit Lernschwierigkeiten zu tun gehabt. Und, und gleich mein zweiter Tanzpartner war ein Mann mit einem immensen Körper, der, den ich, ich habe ihm gesagt, äh, weißt du, ich, ich, ich kann eigentlich nicht tanzen und ich glaube, ich habe ein bisschen Angst und so. Und, und er hat mich gar nicht verstanden. Ich, ich, ich habe ihm versucht zu sagen, weißt du, und mein Rücken, der tut manchmal weh. Er hat, er hat mich nicht verstanden, weil, weil er konnte mich nicht verstehen. Aber er hat die Worte nicht verstanden, aber er hat verstanden, dass ich jetzt äh, ängstlich bin, auf einer ganz anderen Ebene. Und wir haben den Tanz unseres Lebens gehabt. <lacht> und er war so zart und fein und ich war, ich war so bewegt, das war für mich... Wie wenn du in den Schalter umlegst, das hat mein Leben geändert. Ich bin dann noch äh, Tanztrainerin geworden, weil ich gerne wollte, dass andere Leute, die auch so eingesperrt sind in ihren Körper, wie ich das war, mh, sehen, dass man sich einfach freuen kann mit seinem Körper. So wie er ist, groß, klein, dick, dünn, <lacht> schief. <lacht> dass einfach diese, diese, dieses defizitorientierte Denken wegfällt. Ja. Ich glaube, das, das ist wirklich Erziehung und, und, und gesellschaftliche Regeln sehr viel von der Freude am Leben nehmen können, wenn sie zu ernst genommen werden. Ja. Das sollte man bekämpfen. <lacht> the space in the street uh, and express ourselves to in the public space yeah? and uh, something nice to to get this right yeah? to ask for this because this is uh, not just to have outdoors with the have say advertisement for things to buy but uh, has some possibilities for us express ideas too or or how to say uh, desires yeah what we want to achieve and 
I think it's really nice to occupy the space. Do, don't live just for the enterprises, you know, not just for people who has money. Yeah. I think we already change when we go in the street and then you you take the space and you appropriate it. It's already a big change, you know, because people's not used for that. And people say, what we are doing here? This is a change. You are make one intervention, a real intervention in everyday life. Yeah, in everyday life, this don't happen, and people be surprised. And when people be surprised, they think about. You know, this is already an intervention when, when some, something is, is different today. And then, of course, a, we not change the world with this, but this is one step to achieve, you know, for ourselves too, because this is empower people. When they come together, they feel more powerful. <laughs> In our world, we don't let just for the enterprise, they know about each other. We should globalize the solidarity too. Yeah? Solidarity is something for we make uh, uh, globalization on it, uh, our own globalization. things that they take with me was the experience with the women here and uh, we have an uh, amazing workshop we made one laboratory we call Madalena laboratory this is a kind of theater of the opera just for women and we are investigating our our the specificities of our oppression that the oppression we face and uh, what is amazing in this kind of meeting that uh, we can see uh, uh, ourselves in the order, you know, like, ah, okay, can you see this woman, she is older than me, but uh, she has the same, she should, she should face things like I, I should face too, and the woman can say, can, can you see this woman, this is really young, and uh, she already should face the same things that I am trying over years to overcome, you know. And uh, this is an uh, amazing meeting, the, the real thing, you know. And uh, again, we are talking about solidarity, because when we see we are not alone, we are not just about us, it's not about uh, to be isolated. And uh, you understand from this, this is about the social context. The things that happen between me and you is not related with <laughs> just me and you, it's not private. It's a consequence of our this social context, and we should be aware about that. To, to change the social context through we all understand our, our problematical relation or something like that. And then this was an amazing meeting.